Hi, um, I'm Edmund Duval, and I'm a potter and a writer. And, and this is this is my studio in South London. So um, I come on in, and I'll show you exactly what I'm up to. So it's an old gun factory, which about ten years ago we converted, more than ten years ago, twelve years ago, converted into the studios. So the studio is clay and words. And there's a clay end and there's a words end, but actually there are no doors here. So everything mingles. We're going to begin up here with porcelain. This is my incredibly uncomfortable bench that I've had um, since I was 20, uh, which backbreaking, but it, it's, it's all made on the wheel. I make everything on the wheel. I've always had made things on the wheel. So this is the clay. It's absolutely beautiful and seductive. And, and the great thing about porcelain is that, of course, it's come a very long way. It's, it's, this is the story of a material that, that, that moves across the world. And, you know, when, I, when I'm making pots, I, I'm thinking about that. You know, so I, I pick up my balls of clay here. I sit on this unbelievably uncomfortable bench, and this is my wheel. But, but this is where I sit and, 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 sit and, sit and throw. Um, listening to beautiful music. Great pile of balls of clay there, and the balls coming off like that at the other end. These are my tools. I have almost no tools at all. You know, sponges, a wire, and, and boxwood ribs for just for shaping, and sharp knives for cutting pots when they go wrong. But that's it. You know, clay, water, sponge, knife, rib, Done. You know, that's it. But when I finish that, when I finish my pots up here, and I've trimmed them, then I put them on a board and I carry them like this and I carry them down, um, with, I have to say reasonably precariously, down this staircase. And, and, they, and they come to the kiln room, which is the kind of heart of the studio. This is really important. This is where the alchemy stuff really happens. And this place, this is where, you know, we fire, we have electric kilns and a gas kiln, test kilns, and there's a huge amount of, of glaze testing going on. So these are all the raw materials. Everything is lethal, basically, you know, cobalt and copper, and calcium, all these things. So you have to be incredibly careful about how you breathe and we vent carefully, we wear masks in here, but we glaze test and test and test. Here are black glazes testing at the moment. And what happens is putting the pots and they go into these kilns here. Electric kilns are very straightforward. They're just big ovens and they, you, you put into the computer, you want it to go to 1000 degrees and you just press a button and it goes up to 1000. So that's very good for the bisking of pots, the first uh, firing of pots where you're trying to, to, to drive the water out of the clay body. Um, and you can get beautiful glazes too in electric kilns. But we use the gas kiln for something called reduction firing, which is slightly more complicated. And a lot of those great famous um, Extraordinary Chinese glazes, the Celadons, the Tamakus, the Guan glazes, the great ones that really part of, uh, part of you know, our, our ceramic history, you can only get in a, in a flaming kiln. You know, and you, you learn and learn and learn and learn. And of course, always things go wrong. So, and you learn from those too. So the studio is filled with, with tests and, and shards and, and, and things in transition between, between one state and another. But this is a really important room really, really important room. This array here on the shelf is all the different white glazes and celadons and temakus, the black glazes, that we're working on at the moment. Um, and you can see that, you know, people say, why don't you use, why don't you use colour? And I fiercely say, but I do, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and it's all in these gradations of uh, between different kind of textures and colours and opacities um, that, that you can that you can find within this spectrum. 
what we have to do is each one, of course, has massively complicated little notes so on the back. Everything's kept within great notebooks. And it tells you exactly that if you want this particular one, you know, um, this one, um, RH Satin Red, you know, that's one thing. But if you want this, this is uh, Cooper White Reduction. Um, and so, that, you know, what you can do is, 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 is work out how, if you're making an installation, a grouping of pots, you know, what kind of, of um, colours and you want to have within the, and play with it. Uh, and then glaze them and, 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 and fire them and then just wait and see whether it works or not. So my work brings together different elements, you know, obviously vessels, porcelain vessels are the absolute heart of it. But also different materials, marble and alabaster, corten steel, aluminium, silver, gold, all these things are brought together to make these, these sort of poems, which is what my installations really are. And I have a particular room where all these materials are held so pots are finished and then they come in and they're put in here. You've got 30 different kinds of marble. You've got, um, you've got unbelievable corten steel, you've got pieces of steel um, which have been milled to different, different degrees for, for me to look at. Um, black marbles, um, fragments of marble, um, alabaster. And all this is sort of testing the world. It's trying to bring things together. And probably most sort of interestingly of all, and you can see, you know, golden tiles there, because one of the things that I do increasingly is to write into porcelain. Lots of these pieces of, of porcelain have words. So it's the bringing together of different parts of my life. You can barely read the text, but the text is there. So it's words coming together with, with pots the whole time. And then those become part of all these different things that I'm doing. I think of my finished work as a kind of poetry in that it's bringing together different elements and trying to hold them in some kind of equilibrium or tension. Um, obviously bringing other people's words in makes a sort of palimpsest, a kind of writing over of one text by another, or a collage. It brings together different voices. Um, and that's, so that's, that's really kind of a, a very much the sort of the feeling of what I'm trying to do, is to hold different voices together. You, you will see actually throughout the studio there are piles of books absolutely everywhere. Um, as you would expect, but up here is more books and archives and texts. This is where all kinds of the writing going on and all kinds of things coming in the whole time, working at the moment on all, you know, lots of different writing projects as well. And then there's an installation and that's, that's a poem too. Words and pots endlessly sort of dancing around together and then landing sometimes in, you know, in the project. But you can't move for clay and you can't move for books. Bizarrely enough, this process of, of, of working graphically in order to make a ceramic object is, is weirdly close to the way I write my books. You know, which is writing a text, cutting it down, going back to it, finding a new way of beginning, sort of smudging the text in some kind of way, but making one, one kind of writing over another in order to end up with a, a book or something. And, and this is sort of how I'm working here. Lots of learning in the process, lots of trying to, to make each of these plates its own thing, but each one has to sit entirely by itself, but next to another one, you know.
it's not a straight line. <laughs> Uh, but, but as I think you've seen in the studio, nothing is a straight line here. It's all about going here and then back and then learning and then despair and then <laughs> going on again. So it's that whole, whole iteration of, of ideas and then do something new about bringing them into a slightly different dimension.